Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to go over the newly released Photoshop Lightroom 5. Yes, they finally released it, Photoshop Lightroom 5. We've been waiting for the new features and here it is. I'm going to click on the website and go to the features page and you can see there are four new added features to Photoshop Lightroom 5. If you haven't seen all the functions of Lightroom, you can check out my video and I'll put a link in the description for Lightroom 4. Now I'm just going to cover Lightroom 5 and the new additional features. So the first one is the advanced healing brush. I'm going to launch Lightroom and as you can see there's a bit of a new splash screen there. And up at the top I have this photo that was taken in the Smoky Mountains and you can see that there are three people up there taking their pictures and I want to get rid of them. Now in the past we had the healing brush and I could kind of take out some of the specs but I wasn't able to specifically clone people out. Now for those of you that have been thinking about getting Elements or Lightroom this is going to make it a little bit harder because Lightroom now does a little bit of cloning. So up here is the spot removal tool. If you click on that spot removal tool you will get the clone tool right here in the healing brush. Now the healing brush is the same as it has always been. You can get rid of spots, specks, hairs, but now we have this clone feature. The trick to doing a clone is to make the brush size about as small as you can get it. I'm going to paint on this person right here to try to get rid of this person and you definitely want to just paint those areas that you want to get rid of so that it will pick a nice clone spot for you. And there we go. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job. I'm going to click done so that you can see what it did. That one was pretty seamless. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to click on the spot removal tool, make sure I'm still on clone. And I'm going to clone this gentleman out now. Let's see how well it does with all three people. Now, on that one person, it did a wonderful job. Let's see how it does on the next one. Still pretty good. I'm going to click the last person right here. This one might be a little bit tougher. They're on the rocks here. And there's a little bit more of them. So let's see if I can get the clone tool to work the way it's supposed to. And it's not too bad. It used the water. I don't really like that, so I'm going to do the Commander Control Z there. I'm going to see if I can get this to pick somewhere where there's some rock. You always have the luxury of doing a Commander Control Z to undo. And we'll see how that goes. No, it's still picking the water, so. Two out of three isn't bad. I'm going to select done right there. Didn't do a very good job on that person right up there, but as you can see on these other two areas, it did a fantastic job of getting rid of the people up there. I'm going to zoom out. It really does clone that area to where you can't see it. Let's go ahead and jump to the next feature that they've improved, and that is the upright tool. Now we've always been able to go in there and kind of fix any kind of leaning buildings or maybe something that was bulged out or distorted in some way. But this one claims to analyze your building and then automatically fix it for you. So let's take a look at that one. I have this great photo that's over here. This was taken in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and as you can see, the building is leaning just a tiny bit. This is the mellow mushroom that they have up there, and I'm going to put the lens correction to the test. So if I come over here under lens corrections, if you don't see it, there's the little triangle right there. There's a little button that says auto, and it's going to analyze that. Click that button and whoa, there it is. It fixed the building. That's amazing how that works. And I have tried this on numerous different buildings and other objects, and it does do a fantastic job. So this one's almost worth the price of upgrading to Lightroom 5 if you don't have it. I'm going to jump back over to the features, the new radial gradient. Let's look at my Lightroom library here. I have a picture of myself that I put on the desktop right over here. 
in the past, what we've been able to do is we've been able to go over and go to the effects tab right over here and you have the post crop vignette kind of darkens the edges of your picture. So if I dial that down, as you can see, it is starting to darken the edges of the picture. starting to look really nice. The only problem is, is that I really don't want the vignette to be equal on all corners. I want the vignette to just go around my face and then darken everything else. So I'm going to reset this photo right there and then we're going to use a new tool called Radial Gradient right there. And then I'm going to click right in the center of my face right there and then pull out so that it encompasses my face right there. And then we're going to take the exposure dial and we're going to dial that down and as you can see it is starting to add that post crop vignette there. Now of course I could make this much larger by dialing that in like that. Maybe even going out a little bit if I wanted to move this to where it's a little bit more centered right there. What's really amazing about this new radial gradient as well is if you want to do something other than just dim the outside, we could go under here under clarity and we can actually make this a little bit fuzzier so that the center is more pronounced. If we didn't want to do that, we could actually take the sharpness and kind of blur it out a little bit as well right in here. And then I can click done. And as you can see, not only do I get the blurred and the darkened edges right there, but it is only hovering around my face. And so you wouldn't get that with the post crop vignette. So I do like this new feature as well, this radial gradient. I'm going to jump back to the features. And as you can see, there is one last one. If you save your photos in a drive that's other than your actual computer drive, let's say it is an external drive to save all your pictures, which I think is a great idea. Adobe has added the Smart Preview onto this. Now what the Smart Preview does, it allows you to edit offline. Now I brought these photos in from my hard drive on my computer, but a lot of my photos are actually on an external drive. When they're on an external drive, I can't edit them. So I'm going to jump to library over here and I'm going to click on this. And what I can do now is I could go over to my library, select preview, and I could build my smart previews. And what that does is it puts a smaller JPEG file. Now it's going to take some space on your hard drive, but it's going to build a smart preview so that you can edit this when you're not connected to your external hard drive. And then as soon as you do connect it to the external hard drive, it will take and it will apply all those edits to your full sized picture. So that's another great thing. I'm going to jump over here to the last two features which are not part of the editing suite. There is a video slideshow. Let's look at that in Lightroom. I have all these photos that are over here and we want to jump over to our slideshow. So we're in the slideshow tab and over on the right hand side we can fill the frame with our picture right there by clicking on that. We could give it a shadow which it's defaulted with a shadow. We could also make the picture a little bit smaller right over here. We could put our name down there especially if we're a professional photographer wanting to get our name down there. If we wanted to give this video out and we wanted to watermark our name on there we could watermark this now. And then we could also make a background image. I'm going to select one of my photos. I'm going to click on that background image. I'm going to drag this over here. I'm going to drop that and as you can see it put that background image, the one that I drug in there, it put that background image in there and you wash it out with a little bit of color so that you can see the main image a little bit more pronounced. You could also put your name as an intro screen and an ending screen if you wanted to. You could zoom it up you could add some dramatic music, any of your MP3s or any of your music that you have, you could add that to your slideshow. And of course the last two are the manual slideshow and then just random order. 
I have already exported the video and exported the PDF and placed them on my desktop. As you can see here, there is this MP4 file that was created. This is a 720p. If I had music attached to this, you would hear, be hearing audio right now, but because of copyright infringement, I did not attach any audio to this, but this is a really nice looking video. You can put this on a DVD, you can put it on a CD, you can make it a 1080p video, you can even make it a smaller video size if you want. I'm going to close that out, and then I'm going to show you the booklet that it made with the slideshow, and as you can see right here, it's a really pretty booklet. This is one that's better suited for electronic files. Now I'm going to show you the last piece to this. I'm going to close this out. And as you can see here on their website, it says New Improved Photo Book Creation. Now, it is linked up to Blurb so that you can order your book in printed form. And right over here, I'm going to click on Book right there. And as you can see, it is a very nice looking book. You can have a hardcover image wrap. What it will do is it will take two of your images and make an actual cover out of it right here, a front and a back. And then for each page that's there, it will put the picture. And then if there's any kind of metadata, you can go in here and you can change the text on your metadata. You can also add photo text to it, put some captions on it so that the book will have something on the left hand side maybe describing what it is that the picture is now over here you can see that it is 13 pages and it doesn't give you a price that's because at the top I've got this set to PDF and I've exported this file in PDF if I wanted to come over here under blurb it would go back and it would figure out how much it would cost me $36.71 in high resolution, very nice looking book, hardcover with the wrap on it. Now you can go in here and you can just change it to soft cover. You can see that it drops the price down. And then if you want it different sized right here, maybe you wanted a very small picture, it will automatically do the cropping for you on the front and the back and then it will resize your photos in there. It's going to be $14.91 for a square photo booklet. Those are your added features with Photoshop Lightroom 5. As you can see, the advanced healing brush really does work most of the time. This auto straightening tool is awesome and I love the radio gradient because you can go in there and you can add not only the post crop vignette but you can also kind of blur out your photo. Last but not least the smart previews that give you the ability to edit offline. It's just great. The video slideshows are a really professional looking video slideshow that you can burn onto a DVD and as well as the new improved book creation. There was the book creation before. This is a little bit improved and they're going through blurb now. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. And if you have not looked at my Photoshop Lightroom 4, which is the entire gambit of features, go ahead. There's a link under the description. I'm Chucky. Cheers.